From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante and welcome to this week's CUBE Insights powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we're going to bring in Sagar Kadakia, who's the Director of Research at ETR. He's been away for the last couple of weeks, really digging into the latest data set. ETR, of course, was in its quiet period. And today, what we want to do is give you three of the macro takeaways from that last two week analysis and drill in to some of the sectors. So Sagar, thanks for coming on. Great to see you again. You know, thanks let's get it. right into it. Um, let's do it, thanks yeah, for having we, me. You've been, you've been crazy busy. We started the year at a plus 4% uh, consensus IT spend. We reported uh, for, for several weeks and then sort of ended up at minus 4%. We're now at minus 5% after you've gone through and done some, some additional analysis. So, so bring us up to date on the IT spend projection. Yeah, no problem. And that's, that's our first kind of macro takeaway is we're seeing declines uh, in IT budget uh, of a decline of 5%. Uh, and remember coming into the year, as you mentioned, consensus estimates are right around that kind of 4% number. Uh, and so we've kind of seen this kind of 900 basis point uh, shift uh, downward. So that's kind of where we are today. If we kind of look at that chart that we've been tracking uh, for the last few weeks, you know, um, and, and for those that have seen this chart before, uh, you'll kind of see where we've been kind of going the last two, three weeks. And for those that haven't seen the chart, uh, I'll kind of go through it now. So um, as, as many of you know, we kind of launched this COVID-19 drill down survey to measure the impact that uh, the virus was going to have on uh, kind of total spend this year. And so we kind of launched that drill down uh, on March 11th. And so if you kind of look at that blue line there, what you're looking at is we asked individuals, you know, estimate what percentage impact you think the virus is going to have on your budget versus your original expectations. And since we launched this on March 11th on that blue line that you're looking at, we got a lot of positivity in the beginning. And so if you look at the blue line all the way through, if we follow that, you get to about 0% growth. Now, the issue is, as I just mentioned, is we launched on the 11th and there wasn't a tremendous amount of information available as to how severe the virus was. And so we kind of did this event analysis. We talked about this last time on the last breaking analysis where it's probably more appropriate uh, to look at a start date closer to uh, 317 or, or 323 when the market really understood the severity uh, of, of COVID-19, right? NYC became the epicenter. And if we look at just those customers who indicated uh, a spend impact after that date, you can see uh, it's coming out to about four or 5% decline. And so that's kind of our, one of our big macro takeaways. And the other thing on this, on this chart uh, to kind of focus on uh, is, and even though we're not looking at, you know, um, some of the, some of the, 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 the vendors here is, when you think about declines, it's not across the full IT stack. And I think that's really important for the audience to understand. We're seeing focused declines among on-prem, uh, legacy, pure plays. You're still seeing CIO spend on cloud and SaaS. In fact, they're doubling down there. And so when you kind of think about how things are going to shape up the next you know, three, six, nine months, there's going to be a lot of bifurcation. And we think cloud and SaaS are going to be well positioned with a lot of legacy and on-prem, that's where you're going to see a, a majority of those declines that you're seeing here uh, kind of play out. Right, yeah, you know, I've made the, the case of, you know, sort of the statement many times that cloud has been, or downturns have been good to cloud. You saw this in 2008, 2009, with the shift from CapEx to, to OpEx, we came out of 2009 mm -hmm. into the, the decade of, of cloud. And you know, very clearly we're seeing some similar things here as people shift to that work from home, we had uh, one CIO on the on the recent Venn said, I, I want to just delete my data centers now. He says, unfortunately, <laughs> he's not going to be able to do that overnight. Uh, but I think it, as, as Eric Bradley pointed out last week, a, a lot of customers who weren't even thinking about cloud or really were sort of reticent to go all in, really have, have, have flipped and changed their tune. Let's talk about some of the industries that are impacted uh, by this you know, COVID-19 and the, the stay at home. And, this slide really kind of underscores that. Why don't you take us through it? Yeah, no problem. So on the last slide, you're looking at kind of our COVID-19 drill down study. On this slide, what we're now going to focus on is a study that we did in tandem, which is called our Technology Spending Intention Survey. Um, and specifically, we conducted this in April. What we did is we asked CIOs to update their 2020 spending intentions versus how they spent in 19. So this survey was originally posed in January. 
And then we're essentially asking for a three month update now. So we're trying to get an understanding of how much has changed in the last three months because of COVID-19. And when we ask these CIOs, we give them essentially a list of 400 vendors and they're able to then indicate which ones they're flattening on, decreasing on, maybe accelerating on. And so what you're looking at here is we've aggregated that data by industry. And if you look at the X axis here, you're going to look at spend intensity versus three months ago. And the Y axis will be spend intensity versus uh, a year ago. And so what you're seeing here is over the last three months, look at how much uh, verticals like retail, consumer, uh, airlines, delivery services, financials, insurance, IT, telco, services, consulting, those have really seen some of the largest pullbacks in spend versus three months ago. And those are also some of the industries that have indicated uh, the largest pullback in demand from consumers and businesses. And so this is where we think a lot of the, the declines that we showed you earlier, it's really kind of focused on some of these verticals. Uh, and, and that's how, uh, you know, when you kind of think about which which uh, organizations are going to be hurt, which ones might see uh, the most impact, you know, three, six months round, this is a, a really good chart to view. Yeah, I mean, a couple of points that I would make on on, on this this data. I mean, retail and consumer, it's, again, that, even that's bifurcated. Obviously the mm -hmm. physical stores, you know, getting crushed. You see, you see Amazon now trading at all time highs, Target uh, announced today, I think they said a 200% increase in, uh, in, in online shopping which of course is fulfilled, 85% of Target's uh, demand is fulfilled by their store. So, so that's kind of mixed. You're going to see an accelerated you know, move toward digital transformation there. Airlines, mm -hmm. you know, it's really unclear what's going to happen there. Uh, IT right. telco on, on one of the last vents, we talked about MPLS, people trying to get off of MPLS, really moving toward SD-WAN. You know, healthcare, pharma, they, they I mean, health, healthcare doesn't have time to do anything right now. I mean, it's just, you know, no time to take a breather. Financials is interesting. I mean, they're they're down right now, but mm -hmm. uh, but but they still have a lot of cash. Liquidity is good, um, and in an energy, I mean, oil. I've just never seen anything like it. Uh, we we we're concerned, obviously, about credit risk there, um, and and you know, <laughs> and oil companies being able to pay off their debt. So it's really um, not a pretty picture, is it? Yeah, and if you focus on energy, uh, even though you're not seeing a huge pullback versus three months ago in energy. It's really important to understand when we did this survey in January, energy was all the way on the left side of that chart. And so it already looked really bad coming into the year. So it got worse, but because of the severity versus last year, like you're just not seeing that much more of a negative impact now. This was before, you know, this survey closed uh, before everything happened the last few days with oil prices. So it is very possible that that data is going to get worse. Uh, and we'll know I mean, we're when we launch the survey. We're not we're not laughing a lot these days, but but you know yeah. if you haven't filled up your car in a while, it's, I mean, it's uh, anyway. Let's go into the security piece. Uh, we talked about you guys are really the first to report this work from home pivot. Others have sort of you know more recently you know come mm -hmm. to that that conclusion. But and it wasn't just Zoom and WebEx and you know video collaboration, Teams, etc. It really was all kinds of infrastructure, including uh, security. So if we could bring up the next chart, guys. Love to sort of get into this. We're going to talk about the sector and some of the, the vendors in here. Let's, let's go. Yeah, no problem. So if we kind of step away from the macro and really start kind of getting into the, the sectors and vendors and here, if we start with security, uh, what we're really saying is that, look, a remote workforce is really kind of revealing best in breed. And we think it's going to lead to, to permanent changes. So what you're looking at here is these are the net scores uh, for each individual vendor. Uh, currently versus three months ago, as well as a year ago levels, right? The yellow bars will be what's currently. And the way to think about net score is just kind of spend intensity, right? And so the higher your net score, the more spend intensity, the more spend velocity you're seeing from enterprise customers. And what we're really seeing here, if you kind of look at the vendors on the left, uh, you're seeing a lot of acceleration uh, among secure web gateway endpoint um, mobile security, cloud SaaS application security, identity. And these make sense, right? As we mentioned earlier, as you really accelerate your cloud and SaaS spend, you're going to want to use vendors that best protect uh, those areas. And so if you look to the left here, Okta and, and, uh, and Zscale or Cloudflare, CrowdStrike, some of these really look best position moving forward. Palo Alto looks good longer term. Splunk, Point also look good longer term. And then the other thing to kind of hit on here is the other side, right? In terms of 
We talked about the bifurcation that we expect. We're seeing significant declines in net scores among a lot of these legacy uh, vendors. You know, checkpoints come down quite a bit. Uh, Juniper, Trend Micro, Broadcom, um, Barracuda Network, SonicWall. And so, you know, you can see the disparity here. It's pretty clear on the image, but we think there's some pretty clear winners and losers here. And, you know, I think we may see permanent changes uh, moving forward. Yeah, so Twistlock, of course, is now owned by Palo Alto, CrowdStrike, right. the hot company in the sector. Okta, I have the uh, uh, the chief product officer coming on um, uh, shortly here for part of my CXO series. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about Palo Alto and and how they sort of fell behind a little bit in the cloud, but you talk to customers, they really see Palo Alto as in there, in the mix. Zscaler came up in, in the Venn as, mm -hmm. to your point, of uh, securing gateways and doing a really good right. job uh, in that space. And so I think, you know, this fragmentation, that fragmentation probably continues, but there's also bifurcation, as you pointed out. Um, let's talk about cloud. Uh, yeah. as, as you've said, uh, and, and I said that, that downturns have been good to cloud. People are obviously looking more toward cloud, whether it's SaaS or, mm -hmm. or you know, cloud type of, of consumption. Uh, let's bring up the next slide, which you know, looks at the big three, Azure, AWS, and, and GCP. First of all, all three have very strong net scores. Um, you know, up in the 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 sixty percent you know plus range, but uh, you have you have Azure pulling away. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's right. And we've kind of been using this this uh, this analogy of you know kind of a, a a horse race. You know, just kind of as context. Uh, you know, coming into January, you see really GCP uh, accelerating, and so one of the things we said in January was it's it's becoming more of a three horse race, right? Even though GCP doesn't have the same type of market share uh, as the other two, you are seeing the spend intensity increase. And now what you're seeing is Azure pulling away a little bit um, because of uh, we think COVID nineteen. Um, you know, when you look at Azure's data set, um, it really looks robust and healthy across all verticals uh, across most regions. And that is what you're seeing here where it's it's continuing to kind of accelerate. It looks good. AWS GCP, it also looks good here, but you're not seeing the same uniform strength, right? There's a couple of verticals for AWS where we're seeing uh, a little bit of a pullback in spend like retail and industrials. For GCP, we're seeing a pullback in midsize and small enterprises. So that's causing, you know, uh, a, a couple of cracks here and there, even though they look overall healthy, but we did want to kind of indicate here on cloud where Look, one vendor looks like they're pulling away when it comes to, uh, you know, spend and spend velocity. It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, we've reported on the sort of deltas between uh, Azure and, mm -hmm. and and AWS and the cloud, the quality of the cloud. Yep. I mean, I think we're we're going to carefully watch the the quarterly reports. You always have to kind of squint through the Azure numbers to see you know what's in there. But there's no question that that Microsoft across the board is is really you know very very strong. All right, let's talk about collaboration, productivity, video conferencing. I mean, we've certainly seen upticks, but if, as shown on this slide, you guys, if you could bring the next slide up, you know, it's not all rosy. Um, talk about this a little bit. Yeah, I think, uh, look, there's been a lot of coverage around which vendors look best. And so I, I kind of want to take the opposite view on this chart, uh, you know, for the audience say, look, which vendors are not benefiting? And this is kind of like a hodgepodge sector of productivity and collaboration, video conferencing. Um, you know, what we're saying is, you know, it's now or never, so to speak. And you're looking at replacement rates, right? So if you look at it, if you, if you see something on this chart that says 20% replacement, that means one out of five customers that indicated for that vendor in our survey indicated a replacement for them, right? Which is, which is not good. And so you're seeing vendors here like Dropbox, Box, and Slack having elevated or accelerating replacement levels and, and these vendors, you know, pitch themselves as collaboration tools. And if they're not doing well now and they're seeing elevated replacements, uh, especially as everyone is working from home, you know, that doesn't bode well, uh, you know, for the future. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> I think people who know me know I'm not a huge fan of Box and Slack. They drive me crazy. Um, and so this is interesting <laughs> to see. Yeah. I mean, we're a Zoom shop, so obviously you use Zoom, you like Zoom. I had my first experience very recently with Microsoft Teams. I was quite impressed. Mm -hmm. I thought it was easy to use. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, Skype hell was just terrible. And so yep. much, much improved. Uh, very interesting cut uh, on that one. So again, it's a, it's a bifurcated story. Um, 
let's drill into teams a little bit. Uh, guys, if you bring up the next next slide, we've been reporting, and you guys are really, again, first on this, how strong Microsoft is across the board, but, but really going after it in collaboration. Yeah, so you know, on that previous slide, you saw that Box, uh, Dropbox, and Slack were all seeing replacements. So again, a lot of customers like, where well is that spend going? Well, it's going to Microsoft Teams, it's going to OneDrive. Uh, this is a Slack drill down, uh, or sorry, a, a Slack and Teams drill down that we did uh, earlier this year. Um, and what we were trying to do is measure um, how these products were going to do in the next 12 months. And so what you're looking at here is Fortune 500 organizations. What we did is we asked them, how much of your organization is using uh, Microsoft Teams today? And what percentage of your organization is going to be using Microsoft Teams 12 months from now, right? That's going to be in the yellow bars. And you can see the big upticks in 12 months. And we took some midpoint averages. Look at how much Microsoft Teams is going to grow uh, within Fortune 500 accounts in the next 12 months. And if we look at Slack on the next slide, you're really now seeing the exact opposite. Same question. How many folks in your Fortune 500 organization are using Slack today? And what does that look like in 12 months? And the midpoint average is actually coming down. And so, you know, look, Slack is a seat-based model. And so when you have less users, that's going to generate less revenue. And so, again, this is amongst existing Fortune 500 customers. This doesn't include new Fortune 500, but, you know, th this spells problems, uh, you know, for Slack uh, when you kind of think about the next six to 12 months ahead. Well, it's one thing if you're competing with Microsoft and your your AWS. I mean, I've, I'm not really not worried about AW, you know, Microsoft taking out AWS. But if if you're one of these collaboration platforms, Microsoft, you know, we've seen over the years. First of all, they got you know great developer affinity. They know how to bundle different products together. Now they got the cloud working, so they got mm -hmm. their flywheel effect in the cloud. Um, there's just not a ton of room. And and the thing is, they have such a huge software estate and such a giant customer install base. And it's just makes it easy for them. The products are, are good enough, or in some cases, really good. Uh, so that's going to be something to, to watch because there's a lot of high valuations going on right now in that collaboration space. That's right. And I think, you know, it really hits on, on the previous slide what we, or the previous slides on collaboration that we saw was when you think again about the declines, a lot of that is impacting some of these pure plays, right? So in security, you saw a lot of the legacy names getting hit. On the collaboration side, you saw a lot of these pure plays getting hit. And so this is kind of, when you, again, when you think about where budgets are going and which vendors are being impacted, it's really concentrated into some specific areas. So now, uh, one of the hardest hit areas, and you guys reported on this earlier, is the IT consulting and, and outsourcing IT. Uh, if you guys, if you bring up that, that chart, it's, it's pretty ugly. Uh, maybe you can explain what you're seeing here and, and why you think that is. Yeah, no problem. So again, this is from our technology spending intention survey. Uh, we're measuring spend velocity here, right? Spend intensity. And you can see across, you know, these are just a handful of IT consulting firms. Uh, if you look at the blue bar to the yellow bar, right? So the blue bar is uh, 2020 spending intent that we captured in January. And now we're asking for updated 2020 spending intentions, right? You can see the deceleration in just the last three months. And if you, you know, if you look at our COVID-19 drill down site that we conducted, one of the questions in there we asked was, you know, are you freezing uh, new IT projects or deployments? Um, almost a quarter percentage of customers said they are. And so, you know, that is going to spell problems, you know, for, for this space. That and, you know, when you think about, you know, look, if you're going into uncertain times, an easy way to, to reduce your budget is by, you know, spending less with consulting vendors since, you know, you can just lessen the number of deliverables, right? These, these individuals get paid based on how many deliverables they complete. So this is another area that, you know, when you kind of think about where the declines are coming from, this is certainly an area to look at. Yeah, a lot of the customers we've talked to have said, we've basically shut down spending on some of the large projects. You know, we're still focusing on some digital transformation, but that's maybe a longer term priority. Um, and then the IBM piece of this chart, guys, if you could bring it back, is interesting to me because look, they paid 34 billion for Red Hat, uh, I've always said a key to the Red Hat acquisition was being able to point it at the large consulting base and modernize those applications. IBM actually had a pretty good quarter uh, in services, uh, although they did mention that, you know, especially in software, that in the last uh, month of the quarter, software spending shut down. 
I don't think we got visibility that this piece of the business, but this could be, you know, somewhat of a concern, you know, going forward. I, I think that's going to be one of the areas that gets slow rolled coming back, Sagar. Um, I don't think it's yeah. going to come back, you know, tomorrow. Um, yeah, I, okay, so so please, your thoughts. Yeah, so on, on just on, you know, just to kind of quickly wrap up IBM. So yeah, one of the things we kind of saw in the data was not only eroding spending intention data on, on a lot of their SaaS portfolio, but also eroding market share. And, you know, we saw big downticks uh, on Red Hat products and IT services and, I, you know, even in cloud. And I know they, you know, they indicated pretty healthy numbers on, on Red Hat and, and cloud. Mm -hmm. But again, we're asking about 2020, you know, forward looking spending intentions. And of course, you know, they, they pulled their guidance. So we, we don't know how that's going to look. But, you know, in our data, things are really coming down versus three months ago. And so, you know, I think just overall, you know, that is a data set that we're, we're quite negative on. Yeah, I mean, I think IBM had, has that sense. Like I say, the, the March March uh, was not good for software, and they yeah. a lot. Of, that's when a lot of big deals come through. You're right. Uh, Red Hat, I think, grew 20% in in the quarter, and it's now, you know, uh, accretive from a cash flow basis, which is one of their targets. I think they beat their target there. Still good cash flow, um, but I think there's just so much uncertainty, uh, and IBM is, you know, going to be have to be prepared for that, and and I'm yeah. sure will. Um, okay, so. Uh, that we're, we're at minus 5% now. We're seeing cloud, SaaS, uh, we're seeing a bifurcation. Uh, we talked about some of the areas that are, that are in trouble. That's kind of part one. Next mm -hmm. week, we're going to be talking about part two. What can we expect? Yeah, we'll start going through, uh, through networking, uh, CDN, ITSM, uh, IT workflows, database, data warehousing, and we'll kind of go through that as well. But again, you're going to see a lot of what we talked about today just the bifurcation and spend where, you know, vendors that are more next gen, more work from home friendly, right? The cloud, all the SaaS guys, they're doing really well. And on the on-prem and the legacy, you're just seeing elevated replacements, elevated decreased rates. Um, and so it's, you know, this is the most bifurcated I've, I've, I've seen this data set and I've been doing this at ETR for, you know, uh, almost seven, probably going on eight years now. So I think that kind of says something about the environment that we're in and what to kind of expect you know, in the next three to six months. I mean, it's kind of like the stock market is right now. You're actually seeing you know, some great momentum in certain stocks and terrible in others. You know, those with great balance sheets and maybe COVID is a tailwind for them. Others, tons of uncertainty, you know, a lot of concern. I know in poking around the data set, like you said, some of the analytics, the data warehouses, you see Snowflake, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, a lot of the automation, RPA you know, momentum is there security? We talked about that. There's some real bright spots there, but but a lot of the on-prem stuff, um, you know, we'll see if product cycles affect that, you know, in the second half of uh, of 2020. But you know, we'll continue to report on this, Sagar. Thank you so much for for coming on, and uh, we'll definitely see you next week. Thanks for having me again, Dave. Looking forward. All right, and thank you for watching uh, this Cube Insights powered by ETR. We will see you next time. Don't forget, all these uh, episodes are available as podcasts, where, wherever you listen, uh, go to etr.plus and check out uh, what's happening there. SiliconAngle.com has all the news. I publish there weekly. I also publish on wikibon.com. Thanks for watching this breaking analysis. This is Dave Vellante for Saga Kadakia. We'll see you next time.